Hey everyone, this is Yannick from Codespecialist.com and in this video we are going to show you how to build a Google login for your Flask application. So first of all we are going to create a virtual environment which eases the way we handle packages a lot. If you're using PyCharm, you can simply add a new Python interpreter and it will pretty much do all the things on itself. If you're not used to virtual environments yet, I can really just recommend you to look into it. So once we are done and you open up a console, you will see that we got this little vnf in front of our commands, which means that PyCharm has successfully set up the environment and activated it. So first of all, let's install Flask and the Google Auth module. There are a lot of functions in that module you really don't want to implement yourself. And unless you know exactly what you're doing, you shouldn't implement it yourself anyway. To save you some time, I'm going to use pipfreeze and print all the requirements into a file. By using pipfreeze, it's going to print all the requirements to the standard output. And when I use that pipe, it's going to pipe all the outputs into the requirements.txt. If you download the source code from the link we provide in the video description, you can simply type pip install -r requirements.txt to install all the packages I just wrote to the file. So let's create a new file, let's call it uh, app.py, which is going to hold our actual Flask application. So first of all, let's import Flask and let's create a simple app. So we're going to instantiate Flask and call it Google Login App. And we need an app secret to secure the app. By the way, you should never do what I just did. This secret shouldn't be easy to guess, but it's all right for test purposes. So basically, we need three functions. We need our login to redirect our user to the Google Consent screen. We need a callback that is going to receive the data from the Google endpoint and we need a logout to actually clear our local session from our user. And let's create two simple pages. One is the index and the protected area that is only going to be shown if the user is logged in. Next, we are going to add these routes to our application by using the app.route decorator. So pretty straightforward, we are just going to append login to the login, callback to the callback, logout to the logout and so on. So if a user opens this route on our Flask application, the application is going to execute the function below. Let's clean this up a bit by using Control alt l which is going to pretty print the code. Next, let's say if under name equals under main, which is just going to be the standard behavior if you call the file directly. So let's say app.run here and set debug to true. Let's try to run this. And as you can see, it's now running on the local host on port 5000. Of course, since nothing is returned and debug is set to true, it's going to print an error. Let's return hello world here and try it again. And as you can see, we now get hello world. Next, we're going to modify our protected area to actually be a protected area. So if we go to our Flask application and type slash protected area, we get the same error as before since we return nothing. We simply say protected here. We need to restart Flask and now we check our route and it's working. But we have no concept to protect this page yet. So to protect this page, we are going to create our own decorator. And this decorator takes a function as an input and has a wrapper. So the idea is whenever we decorate a function in our Flask application, it should be protected from unauthorized users. To check if a user is logged in, we are going to store the Google ID in the session. Flask already comes with a session package, but it is client-side and stored in the browser cookies. So you really shouldn't use this in production systems. Now we simply say if the Google ID is not stored in session, we are going to board the request with a 401 which will simply return the HTTP 401 unauthorized. So let's return this and let's say else return function. And last but not least, we need to return the wrapper. 
To use this decorator we can now use simply the add annotation. But make sure your decorator is the first one because decorator get executed from bottom to top. If we now refresh our page we get the HTTP 401 which means our decorator is working fine. Now we need a kind of button or link to actually call the login and we are reaching that by simply appending some HTML to our return value of index. Usually you would use the Jinja template engine, but for simplification we are going to write everything in this file. Let's check this also. Let's go back to our root. And now we have that simple login button that is going to redirect us to the login. To test this we are going to fill Google ID with some random value and return a redirect to our protected area. Let's import flask.redirect and hardcode the path to our protected area. If you now go to our root and click login, it's going to write the Google ID and we are logged in. Now we need the logout button and we are simply going to copy the login button and change it to logout. And our logout function is not going to do anything else than redirecting us to the index and clearing the session. So the user information in the session is going to be cleared. And as you can see, this is working pretty fine. All that's left now is we need to send the user to the Google login and receive the confirmation. But first we need to create a Google app. So go to console.cloud.google.com and log in with your information. Once you're logged in, go to select a project and create a new project. Give it a simple name, I'm going to call it Google Login Flask App and create the app. Now open up the project you just created and go to APIs and Services and create credentials. We now need to configure our content screen and as long as you're not using this for your company you should choose external. Next we need a name and we are going to call it Google Login Flask App again. And you have to provide a user support email as well as the email of the developer. So that Google or any users using your app can contact you. Let's save and continue. We leave scopes as they are. And we are also not going to use any test users. Check your information once more and go back to the dashboard. And now we can create a Google OAuth to client. Go to create credentials, OAuth to client ID and select web application as your application type. We need a name for our client, we're going to call it Flask client. And we need to add an authorized redirect URI. This is going to be our callback route. This is a security feature of OAuth and should protect users from being redirected to malicious sites. So for our test app we are going to enter the local host at port 5000 slash callback. Which is going to call our callback function we defined. So let's create this. And now you can download your credentials by clicking the download button. I'm going to include the client secret, but it's going to be invalid the moment you see this. So make sure to create your own client secret. I'm going to paste this into a new file. I'm going to call it clientsecret.json to load it later and identify as the Flask app client. So there's a lot of information in this file. But we are only going to pass this to the Google OAuth and use the client ID. Let's copy this to, to save it in a local variable in the app. I'm going to call this the Google Client ID. And now we can create a flow that is going to all the information about how we want to authorize our users. Create a flow we will call the from client secrets file method and pass in the secrets file we just created. In Python 3.4 we got the pathlib which really simplifies importing files. Let's import OS and call the path.join method to combine multiple strings into a path. 
first part is going to be pathlib.path, then the file.parent, which is going to return the current folder we're in. And the second part is just the file name we just gave it. Our flow takes three parameters. We're going to pass in the client secrets file, the scope, and the redirect UI. The scope determines on which APIs you're going to have access. But as we don't want to use any APIs, we're just going to call user info profile, user info email and open ID, which is pretty much the standard scope. And we also pass in the redirect URI, which is going to be the endpoint the Google API calls. This is as before the endpoint for the callback and thereby the localhost at port 5000 slash callback. Now we have to modify our login function to redirect the user to the Google consent screen and use the authorization function of the flow, which returns an authorization URL and a state. So the state is basically a security feature of OAuth. It is a kind of random variable that will also be sent back from the authorization server. So you should always check if the state you initially created and the state you received are the same to ensure no third party has hooked on your request. We will do that by simply saving the state in the session. Let's add a return that redirects the user to the authorization URL. If this works, we should now be sent to the Google consent screen where we enter our Google details and the answer should be sent to our callback function. So now the function is going to raise an error because we return nothing, but we see we called the callback and have all these fragments in our URL. Let's update our callback function and we start by calling the flow.fetch token method, which is going to kind of trade the arguments we just received for an access token to the API. The authorization response is simply going to be the URL we just received. So we pass in request.url. And now we can check if the state we received and the state we have saved in our session are the same. If the states differ, we are going to return a HTTP 500 and abort the request. So we can protect our app from cross-site attacks. After flow.fetch token has successfully been executed, the credentials are going to be saved in flow.credentials. To verify the data we just received, we need to create a hook on the token request and call the verify oauth 2 token method. This function in turn takes an ID token, which is saved in our credentials, the request hook we just created, and the audience, which is just going to be our Google Client ID. And now we return our ID info to test if this works. Let's go to the login page, enter your credentials, and yeah, we get an error. By default, OAuth 2 only works with HTTPS. But as this is a test, we can simply bypass this by setting an environment variable. Let's set OAuth insecure transport to one. And now callback is going to return ID info. Finally, let's modify our callback function so it doesn't return ID info, but append the Google ID and the username to the session and redirect the user to the protected area. And there we go, we can now use Google OAuth to log in and log out. As I said, we included all the source code in the video description and you can now go and implement your own Google login for your Flask app. If you liked this video, please subscribe and make sure to activate notifications so you get notified when we publish new videos.